The universe is real. Hi, my name's Alex. I've argued enough for a lifetime. In this series of videos, I zoom in on the perspective science can give you. I'll show you the playlist at the end, because nature's complex. Science isn't. So, there it is. Goodbye. Thanks for listening. Okay, just kidding. But yeah, there it is. And we'll start with a piece of music and imagery. Mars is the red planet, my father told me once. Look, I took a step closer and peered through that little telescope. There it was, the planet Mars. It was quite fuzzy, to be honest, just a little ball hanging there, pretty much looking like it would never, ever move. It looked, well, dead, really. Still, this was one of the most exciting things I'd ever seen. If I'd thought about it, I would have probably just called out, there it is. It's not red, Daddy, I said. Why isn't it red? It's supposed to be red, Daddy. Thinking back, I believe my father would have liked to do what I can do in the description. Link to the answer. Honestly, it must have been a nightmare to have to explain this to a little boy who could stay silent for just about a little longer than one breathe in, breathe out cycle. Thankfully for him, something else drew my attention, eventually. Because on the next day, we stood there too, at the same place, but a little later at night, and pointed the telescope the same way. Well, not the same way at all, really. Why is Mars over there today? I asked. I couldn't make sense of that. Yes, all planets circled around the Sun, and that meant that they didn't have to stay at the same place, but Mars seemed to have gone the wrong way. Had it? I wasn't sure. Did all planets circle around the Sun, or did some of them do something more complicated? I seem to remember somebody, my science teacher probably, telling me that things were, well, complicated. Now Mars is out there, and it behaves exactly the way nature and little me once slash wanted. However, thinking things through, you soon find that strangely Mars will have to look as if it moves backwards from time to time. The Sun's in the middle, the planets move around it in approximate circles, but at different velocities. If you sit on one of the planets, then the other planets will have to look like they move backwards once in a while. Little me then couldn't understand it, even when I was shown a mobile with moving balls of different sizes. Can you? Perspective is difficult, in all possible ways, yet for all that I became interested in it all. I forgot my dinosaur puppets and got into space, as it were. Nowadays we get the images from the European Southern Observatory, from the Hubble Telescope, or more recently the James Webb Telescope, or a whole host of other space and ground-based telescopes belonging to different institutes and organizations. Surely looking through your small telescope in the backyard at fuzzy non-red planets has lost its appeal. Well, no. Because online or even in a presentation hall where we may see those images, we are overloaded with stuff that is just as intensely colorful as it is well designed. Communication advisors at space science institutes or agencies such as NASA use the same tricks as the commercial advertising industry with its decades-long research on human psychology. But out there, in the backyard under the stars, the winds in your ears and under your clothes, you're freezing to death it seems, and yet you see for the very first time that Mars is out there, that Saturn and Jupiter are there too. In my case, I even recognized the moon for what it was for the first time. It's out there. It really is there. No strings attached, literally. They're floating around in space, held in orbit by the sun and their own velocities. So, there it is. Make of it what you will. <laughs> 